There's a lot of useful tools out there that will help you troubleshoot OAuth and OpenID issues. What we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the NetIQ Playground tool. Uh, it's a tool that's available through this cool solution here. There is the URL. Um, and what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to simulate a number of o o OAuth requests using the various flows available in an OAuth environment. Now, in order to install this application, uh, you have to download this file here. And when you download this file here and unzip it, it will generate a, a WAR file, which can be used to deploy in any Tomcat 7 or 8 environment. In fact, for this demo here, we're going to actually install it in a NAM appliance under the uh, Tomcat instance that the IDP server runs on. Uh, what I've simply done here, you can see that I've downloaded the zip file. I unzipped it to get the WAR file. I CD, CD'd into OPT Novel NAM IDP web apps where I copied the file. And as soon as I copied it, uh, Tomcat picked it up and deployed it. So you can see the listing here and the listing here a couple of seconds later. And I've created the NetIQ Playground. So when that has been done, I should theoretically have this NetIQ Playground application that's available. So I go, uh, this was done on the NAM appliance where the IDP listens out on 2443 natively. If you do this, if you copy the WAR file over to a non-NAM appliance, so a, a native IDP server, it listens out on 8443. So you're going to have to point to the either the IP address or DNS name colon 8443 in that specific environment. Before we go in and uh, we look at the various options available with the application, let's take a look at the administration. So in or I beg your pardon. So we will go over to the uh, iManager uh, for this particular IDP server. I'll go into the OAuth tab and I'll look at the client applications. And under client applications, the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to register this NetIQ Playground application. So I can do that by clicking on register new client. And in here, I'll populate a couple of very basic fields. So here's a logical name associated with the application. Uh, the client type, is it a native application or is it a web-based application? For this, for this example, it's going to be a web-based application. What are the redirect URIs? So there are specific redirect URIs that are documented as part of the cool solution that you need to populate. What type of grants do you want? So are you going to support all these different flows here. So for the sake of argument, well, I've already registered the application. So let's go and take a look at what the application configuration looks like. So I'll go in here. I've given it a logical name of NetIQ Playground. And we'll go in and have a look at it. So uh, the client ID and client secret will be generated when you register the application. So that's not something that you enter. As soon as you save the application, you will get these parameters. And the, these are key parameters that are going to be used as input on your uh, OAuth application. You've got the logical name that I mentioned there. It's a client, it's a web-based application. There is the redirect URI. So the re redirect URI is always slash NetIQ Playground OAuth to client. And that is where uh, control will be passed back to uh, from the IDP server once we generated the access token or maybe the authorization code that's used to, to retrieve an access token. Uh, the grants required, I'm going to specify everything. So as part of this demo, we'll just demo uh, all these. So the authorization code, the implicit flow, resource owner credential, and the client credentials. Now, information on all these flows are available within the NAM documentation. So you go into the NAM documentation, and uh, you've got the various flows in there, grant types. Now, there is a number of, there, there are obviously differences between the various grant type, but ultimately, the goal of each is to get an access token, which has some information associated with the user, uh, at the user scope, so what the user theoretically has access to before you can pass that on to a backend uh, server. Uh, so let's go back into the configuration. So, um, so that is, once you've done that, you save it out, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to go and uh, take a look at the application. Another field in here is the endpoint summary. And the endpoint summary all tells you what are the key endpoints within this uh, IDP server. So authorization, clients, token, token info, user info, et cetera. And we'll use these in, 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 in a minute now to show what, we, what we'll do. So now let's go back to the application. So now I've accessed the uh, NetIQ uh, Playground application. 
I'll go in here and I will populate it. So in here you have a number of options. So you've got authorization code, implicit, client credentials, resource owner. So these are different grant types that you can actually simulate using this application. So I'll start off with the most common one, and that's the authorization code. So oh my goodness, let me just click here. Uh, I put in the client ID. So this client ID is obtained from uh, the client application over here which has, when I've saved it, it'll give me uh, the client ID and also a secret. So I'll just go in here. So this here is 6B7, so 6B7 in here. The scope, uh, this is the scope that uh, the, the application has access to. So this is obviously something that needs to be configured on both the client side, and obviously there has to be a corresponding scope over on the, the server side. The profile scope is one of the pre is the predefined scopes that are available and it includes a number of uh, uh, attributes associated with the user that I can get back and avail at the application level. The callback URL, so this is the callback URL that we've, the, this is the URL that we're going to pass control to once the application or once we've we've got the piece of information that we've, we've required or we've asked for on the identity server. And then where are we going to send this request? Well, because it's the authorization code, we're having to send it to the authorization endpoint. So these key attributes will be used as part of the OAuth request into the IDP server. So let's, we'll submit the request now. And, ooh, I was already logged in. Um, let me just log out. Um, I'm just gonna show you here. prove that I was logged in. Actually, I will kill this for now. This. So in here, uh, not only that, but I can also see the permissions that I have for the various OAuth applications. So I've actually granted permission uh, to access the NetIQ Playground for, for the user and cashel on this uh, client application. I'm going to revoke that access for this particular test. It'll, it'll appear the next time around, and I'm going to log out. Once I close this and then log out. So now I have no session on this browser. I'm going to go back to the home. I'll have to repopulate uh, the, the input fields. So here the client ID, which we got from the configuration, the scope, just the profile scope, the callback URL, where we're going to pass control to once from the IDP server when it's been done, and where am I going to send the OAuth request. So this time when I click submit, hopefully I should get prompted to log in. So that's good. I get prompted to log in on the identity server. Uh, I should now be asked whether I want to allow the app. So net, it's telling me here that the NetIQ Playground application, that's my OAuth app, is actually requesting the user NCashel's basic profile. So, so that's the profile that I passed in as part, part of the scope. So I'm going to accept that. And now I've got an authorization code. And that's what I would expect in the authorization flow. So before we go to the next step, let's take a look at the OAuth request. So here is the HTTP request that's sent via the browser to the remote IDP server. And in there, I'm, I'm sending it to the AuthZ endpoint. I'm passing in this scope here. The response type is code. That says I want an authorization code back. And then the redirect URL. That's where I'm going to pass control uh, back. And you can actually see that in here. There is the OAuth2 client, uh, which is the, the call back there. And then finally, the client ID. And the client ID, when the IDP server processes this OAuth request, it checks to see if it has a matching client ID. And hopefully, it satisfies that request. So in our case here, uh, we had no problems generating the request, and here's the response back from the server, the IDP server, and it's given us uh, a, an authorization code. And because we're using this authorization grant, the next step is that the application takes this code and it sends it over to the IDP server. So again, we have to register a callback. We have to send it to an endpoint, but this time it's not the AuthZ endpoint, it's the token endpoint. And also, we pass in a client secret. And the client secret, again, is available from the registered application over here. And it's typically sent from the application itself. It doesn't go through the browser 
at all. So we keep that hidden away from the user. And it's a form of authentication that the application does on the identity server. So now we'll hopefully we'll pass in the authorization code and we should get an access token back. And here is the access token. Now the access token is key. Now with the access token, I can actually take that and I can send it over to the backend server. But what is in an access token? Well, uh, let's take a look to see if we can get, uh, so here's the request. We could see the request go over. Uh, and there's the authorization code. So we'll put in the code. Uh, it's going to token endpoint and we'll pass in the redirect URL and it should be the secret in there. Is it, is it not? There's the client ID again. Okay. And then uh, we should get our token back. So now let's, let's actually see what we can do with the token. So I can actually take the token and I can send it to the token endpoint, which will actually just validate the token. I can send it to the token info endpoint. It'll give me a little bit of information with the token, or I can send it to the user info endpoint so that I'll actually get user specific information. So now if, for example, if I had this access token, I could actually send it over to the IDP server and I could get some information back associated with that user. So there is an example of uh, the authorization code going in. Let's go back now. I, sh of course, I've logged in, so I should be able to see an authenticated session. And now if I go back to the app permissions, I should now see that I've given the approval for the NetIQ Playground. So uh, all in all, this is a very useful tool. Uh, we saw how we could actually get the authorization code and use that code to get an access token and then use that access token to get specific information associated with the user. So now let me just do a logout again. I'm going to do a logout here and we look at another grant. Uh, so I've logged out of the IDP server. I'll go back to home and this time I'll take a look at another um, flow. I look at the uh, maybe the resource owner flow, which is quite a common flow for native applications. So now with the resource owner flow, I'm going to I'm asked for different information. So I'll pass in the client ID. I'll pass in the client secret, which I have here. Now I'll have to put in uh, because this the example of the resource owner flow might be uh, Facebook, where uh, Facebook has developed a native application that is logging its users directly into Facebook. So it's not log it's logging it into a first party site as opposed to a third party site. So for that reason, what you can do is you can actually give the application the username and password. And we could also put in the scope, for example, like we did the last time. And then we'll have the uh, token endpoint. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to generate this OAuth request with this information and we're going to send it to the token endpoint and hopefully we'll get access, we'll just get an access token back. Which again, the goal of all this is to get an access token. So now you have not seen, you've seen that I haven't been asked to log in via the, via the browser like I did the last time, because I've actually submitted the credentials directly to the token endpoint. So it's done the validation automatically for me and it sent me back the access token. And now what I can do is just like I did the last time, I take this access token and I send it to user info endpoint and I have, uh, and I have uh, information about the ooh, information about the subject there. Um, you can also use this tool. There is the request. So there, the uh, the authorization, uh, the access token is actually sent in the authorization bearer header, and you get the response back, which should include information about the access token it, it itself. So in this case here, I've got the subject identifier. So this is typically my GUID over on the IDP server where I authenticated. Thank you.